I've recently changed the gradient factors on my shear water perdix and I wanted to take this opportunity to explain to you why I've done that. Now before I go into that I want to talk about what gradient factors are. Now I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who understand them and if you're one of them then please feel free to skip to the bit of the video where I talk about why I've changed the gradient factors. If you're not one of them and you'd like to know a bit more about gradient factors, then hang on in there. I'm going to give you a, a really straightforward explanation that I think uh, should uh, put the rest of the video into context. So let's start off with what I think pretty much every diver knows, which is that if you get bubbles of inert gas coming out into your bloodstream, then you are at an increased risk of decompression illness. Your dive computer needs a way to estimate when that is likely to happen. And the way it does that is by calculating how much nitrogen has been dissolved into tissues with you when you're underwater and how quickly it's coming back out as you ascend. Now, the, the way that most modern dive computers do that is using something called the ZHL-16 model. It's, it's been used in a vast number of dive computers. It's used in pretty much every rebreather. Now, what that model does is it says there are 16 theoretical tissue compartments in the body which absorb and release nitrogen at different speeds. Some of those compartments are fast, like blood and the brain, which means that gas goes into them quickly and gas comes out of them quickly. Others are slow, like fat or cartilage, and that means that the gas transfer takes much longer. So all the time you're underwater, your diver computer is constantly calculating how saturated each of those 16 uh, tissue compartments are and, and, and you know, uses that information to calculate uh, the decompression that you need to do. How does it calculate the decompression that you need to do? So what Bullman said is that each tissue compartment can tolerate having a gas pressure higher than the pressure in the ambient environment. So effectively for us, that means the, the depth of water that we're in. And that higher pressure in the tissue compartment is called supersaturation. So the level of supersaturation that each tissue can accept before you run the risk of decompression illness is called the M value. You think of the M value as the absolute ceiling. So if you go higher than the M value, i.e. your tissue becomes more supersaturated than the, the M value, then you have a, uh, an unacceptable risk of decompression illness. That's effectively what Bullman said. He said, here's the ambient pressure. Above the ambient pressure is an amount of saturation that your tissues can tolerate. But if you go more than the M value, then you're into a risk of uh, decompression illness. That's really straightforward. Now, the question you might say is, great, Bullman's got this theory. Why don't we just dive up to the M value? And some people do that. But what we do with, with most modern um, dive computers is actually we dive below the M value. So effectively, that gives us uh, another element of uh, conservatism. It reduces the risk even further. That extra margin of, of safety is calculated using uh, gradient factors. What are gradient factors? Well, you've probably heard um, terms like gradient factor 3070 or 6080. And what that gradient factor does is simply it's a percentage of the allowed supersaturation compared to the full M value. And the, the numbers in the gradient factor are what are used to compute that percentage. You've already heard that gradient factors are expressed as two numbers. 3070, 6080, and the two numbers, the first one is the gradient factor low, and the second one is the gradient factor high. The gradient factor low determines how close you are allowed to get to the M value at the beginning of your decompression. So at the, the whatever depth your decompression starts to occur. So if you choose a low gradient factor low, something like 20 or 30, you're telling the computer, bring me to my first decompression stop earlier and deeper. If your gradient factor is, is low, is higher, so say 50, 60, 70, the first stop will be shallower because you're allowing more supersaturation deeper down. So the second number in the gradient factor equation is the gradient factor high. And the gradient factor high controls the supersaturation when you reach the surface. 
a lower gradient factor high, say 70, means that you are likely to uh, surface with less supersaturation than if you chose a higher gradient factor high, like 90 or 95. So you're going to have more supersaturation when you get to the surface. So in simple terms, gradient factor low is how conservative your deep stops are. Gradient factor high, how conservative your shallow stops and surfacing are. The clever part is what happens between those two points. So your computer draws a straight line between your gradient factor low and your gradient factor high. And as you, you ascend, the computer doesn't jump from one number to the other. It just follows that line. So effectively, the gradient line, the line between gradient factor low and gradient factor high becomes a new line similar to the M value. And that defines your entire decompression profile. If we were to consider two common settings, let's say uh, gradient factor 3070 versus gradient factor 6080. If you had gradient factor 3070, your first stop would be deeper. You would have a longer overall decompression time and it would you know, be far more you know, effectively cautious. Gradient factor 6080 would have a shallower first, first stop and a shorter decompression time and is actually much more similar to the original Bullman behavior um, you know, and frankly closer to what Bullman considered was okay. I think it's important to say that neither of those two is safer in an absolute sense. I mean, according to Bullman, they're both very safe. They simply represent different risk um, techniques and different dive styles. It's important to remember that the risk of decompression illness is not the only risk that affects you when you are uh, diving. And there are other things that need to be factored in. Why do divers choose to adjust the day gradient factors and why do they use different ones? Well, there's a whole load of other factors as I've already talked about. So water temperature might be one. If you're diving in colder water, you are gonna off gas at a slower rate than if you are uh, diving in warmer water. Workload and stress. Once again, if you are working hard and you are stressed, chances are you're going to absorb more gas than you would do if you were not. Age and physical condition is a really important one. It's simple fact of life that younger, fitter people are going to have improved gas transfer over older and less fit people. Repetitive dive schedules, another factor. If you already have gas in your system from previous dives, that is going to have an impact on your dive profile. And obviously, and you know, the big one for me, I guess, length and depth of dives are also important. There may be recommendations by your training agency who might say, you know, you should dive with these gradient factors. And also the other factor, of course, is personal um, conservatism. And, you know, people who have uh, you know, had decompression illness already may choose to have particularly conservative um, dive profiles. I think it's important to understand that there isn't a, a universal setting that's best for everybody. You know, this is, uh, as my good friend Richie Cola likes to say, this isn't decompression science. This is decompression theory. And gradient factors are just one tool to find how close you can get to those the theoretical limits. And once again, I go back to that point. Gradient factors don't guarantee safety. Diving under the M value doesn't guarantee safety. It's a theoretical limit. That is what gradient factors are, and I hope that's useful. So let's come back to me. What gradient factors have I used, and what have I changed them to, and why have I made that change? So let's start off with what have I used historically? Well, I've used uh, 6080, and the reason I've chosen 6080 is because those are the recommendations from the agency that I've done all my training with, and the agency that I am as a qualified instructor with so they don't uh, it's the british tobacco club uh, i think probably most people knew that but if if you didn't that's uh, that's who all my qualifications are with so the british tobacco club what they did is they realized that people wanted advice and wanted to know what good gradient factors are so they went to a chap called gavin anthony who is a well-known um expert in in this kind of 
in the in the field of uh, diving research and he what he did was a literature survey and he went out there looked at all the research papers that had been written and got all the recommendations in and his recommendation for trimix diving was that people should use 60 80 british tobacco club published that and it's out there and it's in lots of their courses and all that kind of stuff that's why i've dived with 60 80 for a long time and it's been absolutely brilliant for me i have had no problems with it i've not got bends and obviously i've done a whole load of diving so you know great must work and, and so far it has the question you're probably going to ask then is is if you haven't been bent and it's worked really well why have you changed it's, it's a good question so in the last 12 months a number of friends of mine have had bends of varying degrees of severity i don't think there's a particular common theme into why they they've got bent and i don't think there's a particular um they haven't all haven't had the same type of bend you know nobody's broken any procedures we haven't had rapid ascents we haven't had missed decompression stops just a load of people have got bent so the question is why have people got bent now my personal view it's just a, a cluster when you're dealing with small numbers of people doing things you know you do get these kind of spikes in stuff and my that's that's what i think it has happened but what it's made me do is have a look at my own diving and made me think about what what i'm i'm doing one of the things that I think was particularly interesting was when I posted the video about Rick Ayrton's bend and his obviously evacuation. One of the, the, the people that commented on that was uh, Neil Pollock, who is you know a very, very eminent decompression scientist. And he suggested that we shouldn't be diving 60-80. He suggested that I should dive 40-70 and... So I obviously thought about that quite a lot and that has factored into my decision making. Now I haven't gone to 4070, I've gone to 5070 because I think that's a bit closer um, to, to what I have been and that I know is working without going as much as 4070. And, and the reason I haven't gone all the way to 4070 is because that would make a significant change to my decompression profile. It would add a lot more time in the water and for me, that, that also brings other risks. You know, you get colder. Um, and, and frankly, you know, I, I know enough about my own body. I think having done a lot of um, diving to know that I think I don't need to be going that conservative. But, you know, that may be somewhere I go down the line. I am getting older, as we all are. And that is probably the main reason that I've decided to change my gradient factors. I've gone Yes, because I'm getting old, I want to just add a bit more conservatism in there. There you go. My new gradient factors are 50, 70. I've done uh, a few dives this year on them already, and I've noticed that I am spending longer in the water and I'm getting less bottom time. But for me, I think the, the benefit of reducing the risk of decompression illness and the fact is I want to carry on diving for a long time. So I think that's what I'm getting out of it. But that's just me. As Richie also says, is don't don't do what I do. You know, you have to make your own decisions. This is, uh, I like to say big boy diving, but it's not. It's big people diving. You know, we, by the time you get to this level, people should be understanding the risks. You should look around at what different people are doing. You should know a bit about you, your own body and you should make your own decisions because that is really important. I thought you'd be interested in what I'm doing. So there you go. I've put it out there. I hope you'd find that interesting. If you'd like to watch some of my other musings, um, you know, I talk about my approach to CNS, talk about my approach to PO2, talk about my approach to bailout. I've got a whole load of other videos uh, that should be up here somewhere that you uh, you might want to uh, have a listen to. Other than that, thank you very much for listening to me. I'm Dom Robinson, Deep Wreck Diver. Thank you.